Basically. <laughs> Right, guys, I think everyone's here, so we'll make a start if that's okay uh, with yourselves. Um, first, I've got to say uh, thank you to everyone for joining, but in particular, obviously, uh, uh, Max and Kieran, uh, we really appreciate you giving up your time and uh, looking forward to the insight that you're going to uh, So, really appreciate that. Thank you in advance. Um, I'm conscious of our time will fly, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get straight into the, the questions. And it's a question to, to both of you, and if Kieran, you don't mind going first. Um, could you set, shed some light onto your journey into cricket and through cricket? Uh, were there any role models along the way? Um, so my journey into cricket was actually a unique one. Um, I, I didn't actually like cricket as a young child. I was, I was a massive track and field athlete. Um, and my older brother was the cricketer. And it just so happened that this one term, this one cricket term in the Caribbean, I decided... Um, I'm just going to follow whatever my older brother does. So I got my dad to get me some cricket gear as well. And um, I started playing cricket. And then I started, I guess, over time, falling in love with the game. And at the age of 12, I think it was, I had to make a decision between track and cricket. And I figured that there were more people coming out of the Caribbean being successful um, cricketers at the time, as opposed to track and field athletes, obviously this is before Usain Bolt and all that. So, <laughs> um, I think that's my, my early days in cricket, in a nutshell. And, and were there any sort of role models that have stood out for you through, throughout your career? Um, I've been fortunate enough to meet pretty much all of my role models. I was a massive fan of Desmond Haynes. Um, he actually became the batting coach of the West Indies early on in my career. Um, Richard Richardson as well, who was actually the manager, and um, Brian Lara, who I have a very good working relationship with. Um, so it's actually been really good to have met and have created relationships with all these people along the way. Quite, uh, quite an impressive set of names. Uh, Max, can I ask you the same question then, please? Yeah, so I started, as, as most of you guys, with family in the garden and stuff, my brother. Um, my dad was a keen cricketer, so I got, got him through that, really. Um, played at school and then age group stuff at Somerset um, all the way through. I actually wasn't in the academy at Somerset, but I played all the age groups all the way through to about 17. And then after school, I was still very determined to play cricket. Um, obviously went to a good sports school with Curran uh, Milford and uh, played some good players there. Um, yeah, and finishing up at school, I obviously yeah, keen to still play. Um, so I went to Australia for six months, um, off my own back really. I, I stayed in a youth hostel, um, did it pretty rough actually com compared to some of the other young pros who come straight off the academies and, and obviously got a bit of uh, backing behind them. I actually didn't have anything. So I did it, paid, it, paid for it myself after working for six months in the winter um, and then sort of just came back and, and bowled in the net at the Somerset Lads just because I've been around. I played some second team cricket previously. Um, just bowled at um, players like Marcus Triscothic and Justin Langer as captain at the time. Um, and just basically kept my face in the picture as much as I could. Um, just any time they wanted to have a bat, I was keen to have a bowl. Um, basically, it was my own opportunity, really. Um, and then played, ended up playing second-team cricket that summer, did quite well. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much played, played, uh, played for some ever since. Um, obviously, mainly in the T20 stuff um, recently, but um, yeah, started off actually playing um, all, all formats. I think something that we, we talked about before as part of this excellence program is sometimes it's really easy as when you have that sort of natural talent just to sort of push along a little bit. And as a teacher myself, I'm always often saying not necessarily the work you're doing inside the classroom, but it's the work you're doing outside of the classroom as well. How true of a statement is that in terms of your career from a cricket perspective, in terms of the hard work that, that goes on behind the scenes? Uh, can I go that to Kevin, please? Oh, sorry. Hello? Uh, I think hard work is important in any, any field. Um, I think when you look at especially international cricket, most, most players are extremely talented, but it's the ones that work hard that have um, a higher, higher rate of success because it's as fine margins between the talent levels of most people that make it that far. And I think it's basically the same thing in the classroom. You know, um, you could be naturally just gifted in terms of getting things, um, but 
when you put in that extra work, that leads you to become a top professional in whatever field you aspire to work towards in your future. So I think hard work, I mean, obviously, you know, people would like to have a bit more social lives and that sort of stuff, but it's, it's sacrifices you pay along the course of life to achieve certain goals. How, do you, how have you, throughout your career, how have you ensured that you, you don't just sort of plateau though? How, how do you keep your ambition and your drive so hungry to, to keep on progressing? Um, so for me personally, like I'm always trying to reinvent myself every season. Um, so whereas I might not have been a good pair of spin in my younger days, like I worked ridiculous amounts of hours in off seasons to develop um, sweep shots, being able to come down the ground, hit the ball along the ground, over the top, you know, create new shots, new scoring opportunities for me, which would obviously allow me to bat for longer periods of time and be more successful in most conditions. Um, I'm just using spin bowling as an example. Um, in terms of fitness and diets and all that stuff, understanding the importance of staying fit, um, increasing my fitness, obviously as I get older, because the older you get, um, the more likely you are to become injured. I'm changing my eating habits, you know, cutting out junk food, fast food, all of that, and sticking to a strict regime that will allow me to play for as long as possible and be as healthy as possible, which is very important for any athlete. That's brilliant. Uh, and Max, if you could sort of elaborate on that point, obviously with the, the format of, of cricket and the, uh, is changing so rapidly, how do you as professional cricketers sort of uh, set yourself up and train for those changes in terms of 2020 cricket to four day cricket, for example. Oh. Uh, sorry, I just muted myself. Um, yeah, just a second that with Karen with the hard work. Definitely, hard work's very, it's, it's ultimately the most important thing. But also, working, working uh, smart is, is also important. Working on the right things rather than just, you can hit balls for ages and actually be wasting, wasting time effectively. You need to be practicing the right things. So, um, those, that separates the, really the guys that play top, top level. Uh, Kieran's obviously experienced a bit more, than the, more of that than I have. But um, I see working alongside people like Marcus Scothic, who's a renowned, like, superb county pro for a number of, number of years, even after he played international cricket. Um, and he, he works the smartest out of anyone, not only the hardest, but he works the smartest. He's practicing specific things all the time rather than just hitting balls for the sake of hitting balls because it's the right thing to do. Um, so I think working smart is crucial. Um, uh, just going back to the question. Um, yeah, I think it's important to be able to adapt between formats. I think that's uh, for the guys that play all formats, that's going to be the hardest thing in the English season because it's so compact. There's so much cricket um, and it overlaps each other. So um, for me, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just being ready for the competition, being ready for that T20 campaign, that five weeks in the summer that I've, I've got to perform in. Um, so I can build myself up to that, really, which is quite nice for me. But um, definitely, uh, the guys that play all formats, it's important that they're, yeah, they're working towards uh, whatever, whatever match they're going to play. Um, that, that preparation starts yeah, weeks out. Um, obviously, the winter's a time for, for tweaking things in the English season. As an international cricketer, I imagine it's quite different um, because you're on tours all the time. It's, it's, you have short windows to be able to practice and work on things. Whereas uh, I think in county cricket, you've got the whole winter um, and then you go into the season and then it's about just playing because there's so much cricket. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I, I believe we've now got a question from Edward Hopper, who's one of our year 12 students. Uh, so Ed, if you'd like to unmute yourself and, and ask away. Yeah, I'll try and uh, remember it. So I've got a question for, uh, for Kieran. So like, as a top order batsman, uh, when you're going out to bat, what is your mindset and how do you uh, find the link between being watchful but being positive as well? Um, I, th I think the most important thing in that is to be positive. Um, I think once you're positive, then that, that sets your body up to know, well, okay, you can be positive in leaving, you can be positive in defence and still have a positive approach. Um, but once you start becoming negative in your mindset, you, you don't really have any other options, so you become sort of a sit a sitting duck for the bowlers. Um, and it's all, it all boils down to the amount of work that you've put in before you get to the crease as well. Like you know your game, you know your game plan, you know the opposition. Um, so you, every opener knows that you have to try and leave the ball as much as possible. Um, if, if it's a one-day match, you're going to try and take on the bowling. 
but you have to play smart and hit the ball um, to the areas that they don't have the strong side field set. So you know, just little things like this, just being mindful of the conditions that you're playing in and then using that to your favour. Brilliant, thanks, Ed. Um, I'd like to counteract that a little bit with Max from a, from a bowling perspective. Um, obviously, you've got quite a, a unique run-up in terms of it's quite fast uh, for a spinner, really, your run-up. Yeah. How, did, how did that sort of develop? And In your opinion, what are the main fundamentals of a bowler? Yeah, it's changed a lot throughout my career, really. Um, even from a kid, it's, um, my bowling's constantly adapting year to year. Probably doesn't help playing on, on small grounds and, and good pitch. <laughs> um, I have to get more and more defensive. But uh, yeah, start, I started off walking, walking up, just wanted to be Shane Warne, basically, and try and bowl a big leg break um, as a kid. And I, and I could, because I bowled quite slowly back then, um, I could spin the ball quite, quite far. And I, I thought that was the way I was going to go down. Actually, the, the, the higher level I played, um, you can't just chuck it up and hope for it to spin and, and get away with it unless you play in huge boundaries, um, which is a bit which is a bit different at Taunton. So yeah, I've I've got quicker and quicker and got flatter and flatter. Um, people might say that's a bit more negative, but there's other ways to take wickets other than trying to hold the perfect leg break. So yeah, I've just used my variations. Um, the run up really stemmed from yeah trying to put as much pace on the ball as possible. You see more and more in T20 cricket, Rashid Khan, Imran Tahir. These guys are quite fast at approaching the crease um, and generally bowl at a quick speed um, and they try and do batsmen off the surface rather than in the air um, which is a tr traditional leg spinner which I wanted to be originally um, and more of a four-day style of leg spinner. Um, yeah fundamentals important uh, having a good strong base at the crease that all, all stems from there really I did a lot of work with Terry Jenner when I was a youngster um, he was actually Shane Warne's coach for those, for those of you who don't know um, and he was all about the basics, having a good, strong base, um, hips, shoulders, um, feet alignment, uh, all towards the target and follow through um, and spin the ball as hard as possible, which I, I would encourage you as a spin bowler to spin the ball. That's, that's the first and foremost thing. Um, so that he was great for the basics, for the fundamentals. And then um, over time, my actions sort of just developed. Um, but yeah, obviously, I try and, try and run the ball, ball into the right-hander as much as possible with my gigglies and sliders and, and don't bowl a huge amount of leg breaks anymore. Perfect. We're now going to the, the floor again. We've got a question from Will Ward, who's one of our younger year seven students. Will, if you can hear me, would you like to unmute yourself? Um, I've got a question for Kieran. Um, when going out to bat, um, was there anybody who you feared as a batter, like a bowler? And if so, how did you conquer that fear? Um. I don't think that there's anyone I've necessarily feared. I think there's been situations where you could you could sense that someone's bowling really fast and you try in that situation to rotate the stroke as much as possible. Um, I think the only time that's ever happened to me was in Australia facing Mitchell Johnson and I was batting with Dwayne Bravo in a one-day match and um, we just rotated the strike off of him. You know, we didn't try and let him bowl at one person for too long, obviously, because that builds up a rhythm for him. Um, as with any bowler, you don't want to give them a chance to bowl at you for too long. So, um, yeah, I don't think I've necessarily been fearful. Just you have to play those situations smart, I guess. What about yourself, Max? Is there anyone you sort of dread bowling to? Uh, in T20 cricket, those guys that, that, that come hard are usually the guys you've got a chance against. So I quite like bowling at the Aaron Finches, the people that try and whack you every ball for six because you feel like you can get them out every ball as well. So, um, again, fearing, I don't think you can fear um, uh, batters when you're bowling because I, I don't think that's going to end well for you. Um, yeah, especially at Taunton, you've got, you've got to, if, you, if you are fearing inside, you've got to put up a front, I think. You've got to show the batsman that you're in control, whether you are or not, or whether you think you are or not. Um, I think that's half the battle. As a, and, and playing a bit of a cat and mouse game, I think you've got to, there's a lot of bluff in spin bowling and, and bowling in T20 cricket generally. I think there's a lot of um, bravado that goes on that's, that you have to get up a front, I guess. Um, but no, I wouldn't say really fear batters. I don't, yeah, I don't think you can as a bowler. Uh, this is probably a, a bit of a similar question, but really, but uh, in terms of the word respect, obviously it's heavily important in the game of cricket. But is there is there an argument that sort of says that you can respect a player too much, and you start focusing on who you are playing against 
rather than your own game. But obviously, you do it against some some big names. Have you ever come across that sort of situation where you've changed your game because of who you're playing against, for example, uh, Kieran? Um, I think obviously you do respect opponents, but you can't you can't let that cloud what you're trying to achieve. Um, uh, I think in this day and age, with all the statistics and all the video footage you have of opponents now as well, that you you formulated a game plan anyway. So I don't think that should cloud. It doesn't matter if someone has 400 test wickets or it's someone making their debut. You know, um, ultimately we're all trying to achieve the same goal in them trying to get you out and you trying to bat as long as possible. So um, it's just to have a clear mind on your plan and focus on what you're trying to do and solely on what you're trying to do, not the opposition. Uh, and Max, how do you feel? Is that no, I, I think the best chance of performance and the best, part, ch best chance of success is if you focus on what you're doing. Um, if you um, let your mind get clouded by what, what's going on down the other end, I don't think that you've got the, you're giving yourself the best chance to succeed. So, um, yeah, focus on your game plans. Um, yeah, that's, that's critical from, it, from my perspective. I think when I'm bowling, just focus on what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Obviously, being aware of the batsman's important, what his strengths and weaknesses are. Um, obviously, someone like A.B. De Villiers hasn't got many weaknesses, but um, you still stick to your best ball. You still stick to what you're trying to do. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully the, the rest will take care of itself. Perfect. Funny that you mention A.B. De Villiers, because that's where my next question's going, and I'm sure you know what's coming. You probably get asked this question uh, all the time. I'll go to, uh, to Max. Uh, can you talk us through that catch, please? <laughs> Um, that's probably the only good thing of that night. I bowled horrendously, but um, yeah, no, that yeah, catch one of those ones you just stick your hand up and it and it sticks. Um, I pride myself on my fielding. I work quite hard on my fielding, so yeah, for to put in it, to put in it. Actually, took a couple of good catches last summer, which is pleasing because normally I'm just steady, just do my job well and and crack on. But actually, to take some catches, it actually takes some 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 you know, media social media attention is is quite nice. <laughs> Uh, Kieran, uh, obviously playing international cricket uh, must have been a, a huge uh, sort of privilege and honour. Could you talk about the sort of feelings and emotions that, that go with that? Um, I think it's actually only the, the first handful of games that you, you sort of think like, well, I'm playing international cricket. And then it, it sort of strangely becomes very similar to like a club match where you get used to it and it's just, you're so programmed to doing what you're there to do that you, you sort of forget about the crowd, you forget about the noise, you forget about the atmosphere. Um, and I think the most important thing in international cricket is trying to slow the game down as much as possible. Just play the game at your pace. You know, don't play it at an international cricket pace because that will burn you out, you know. Um, I remember my first day of international cricket, I think I fell asleep on the bus going back to the hotel. Like I was, I was just mentally just like, it was so much, you know, and it wasn't good that it was against India as well, which brings like an extra billion people watching you. <laughs> but, um, you know, you get, you get used to it quickly and you learn how to deal with it. And then it just becomes hard and parcel, just like any other match. Perfect. Um, this is a question to both of you. I'm going to start with Max, if that's all right. Um, I think we all are aware of how cruel of a game cricket can be sometimes um, and actually at times quite soul-destroying if you're going through bad form or whatever it may be. How important has sort of mental strength been throughout your career and the sort of toughness and resilience that goes with that? And is there a way that you've practised that? That's a good question. Um, I actually haven't used this sports psychologist much um, in my career. We've had them available at Somerset, but I've never really... Required him, so I've always been quite a confident person. Um, actually, that, that talking about that, you bring up um, bad memories. That Av De Villiers catch that game. I was first time, first time actually after the game, spoke to a sports psychologist just because I'd never been in that situation before, where I was like not happy with the way I performed from a I know I can do better point of view. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's important just to be confident. If things aren't going your way, you got to find a way to. So I'm actually trying to find a, a, a reason why that happened, and then picking apart why that why that happened. What was I thinking? How can I not be in that mindset again? Or if I'm in that mindset again, how can I get out of that quickly? Because that's never happened to me before. Um, and I'm quite fortunate, actually, throughout 12 years of playing professional cricket. I've never been in a position where I'm like, oh, I don't know where it's going. Or I don't know how I can cope with that. Um, so actually, majority of my career, I've been pretty lucky, I'd say, with the, the positive side of, of, of thinking and where, where I'm trying to bowl, what I'm trying to bowl, the situation being not being overwhelmed by the crowd. Because I've been in situations where I've 
I played in India like Karen. I played in the Champions League game or Champions League competition over there in the B20 against some of the best players in the world. So I've been in higher pressure situations than that. Um, and just, yeah, coping with those well. So I was, yeah, pretty shocked um, how that happened, did happen last year. Uh, from, he's from frozen for a second. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear. Can you hear me? Mine's just gone. Hold on a second. Hi guys, can you hear me? I'm not on mute. I'm a breath. Did I um? Did I? Did everyone hear that? What I just said there. I heard yeah. you. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, Karen. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you guys. I think it's just. Uh, Pat having these technical difficulties, the joys of Zoom. Oh. <laughs> some Wi-Fi, is he up north? Please get some Wi-Fi up there. Oh yeah, well, you know, up, up here in Yorkshire, mate, you don't get Wi-Fi up here. <laughs> Not all on plus net broadband up there, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah, been to you know, before, to be fair. You know, I'm from Africa, mate. This is, this is slow up here in Yorkshire, and I'm African. It's a third old country. <laughs> while, uh, while, um, while Pat's sorting that out, should, do you want to... Um, I think from I've got like the best set here, and I think if we can then, uh, Kieran, if you can then answer that same question about about the mentality and kind of techniques you've used to help you, especially when batting. Um, yeah, I think I think the most important thing um, for me that I've found out, especially over the last three four years, is having passions outside of cricket. You know, having things outside of the game that you know brings cricket into perspective. Because as cricketers, you know, we get so consumed by the game and the world of cricket that like we, we think cricket is the be all end all and you know if we have a bad day it's the world's over and if we have a great day you know we're kings of the world um so i think it's just finding that that middle ground where you know you could take things into perspective um keep an even balance which will allow you to be more consistent and and perform more often than not I definitely second that. Sorry, just the, you see the top level performances actually came up in the media the other day about Joe Root. Someone said something about Joe Root. You wouldn't know if he got naught, if he got 100. He's very level head, like consistent with his yeah. mindset the whole way through. And I think that's crucially important if you want to perform at the top level. Yeah. Um, being being o overly happy when you do well and overly down when you do badly is, is not the way to go. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. I just wanted to come in and just say hello to Max and Kieran from here. I finally got a camera and can join you. Um, you uh, talking about being level-headed? That certainly doesn't describe me when I have a bad day playing cricket. So it ruins my month. Never mind my day. I so can second that. My advice. What's that, Joe? Said so I can second that. Yes. <laughs> so true. Mr. Roberts is worse than I am. <laughs> so I think what we're going to move on to now is uh, is Alex Burton. If you can unmute yourself, I believe you have a question for Max. Alex? Um, yeah, I've got a question for Max. Um, what do you think you did when you were younger made all the difference that got you where you, were, what got you, where you are now? I think the, the hunger to play cricket. I was desperate to play cricket at the highest level I could um, and trying to make the most of what, what I have. Um, but, but either by getting myself opportunities, um, by working bowling hard at the nets, whatever it is, to give myself that step above other people, um, to create opportunities for myself, basically. Um, and then it's down to performance, and you have to ultimately perform when you get opportunities, making the most of every situation, um, chance you get, whether it's bowling, batting. You won't be able to score runs every day, and you won't be able to take, take wickets every day, but as long as you're giving yourself the best chance to perform, that's all you can ask for. And, yeah, try and make the most of every opportunity you get. Yeah, I think, I think that's one of the, like, you seem to... The themes we've seen with Max as well is saying is that is to give yourself the most opportunities possible and to do and to always put your hand up and be able to put yourself in that position where you give yourself the best chance to succeed and kind of not being afraid that it might not turn out and it might not it might not go as well as planned but you've you've kind of always putting your name in the hat and that's what people respect especially as coaches as well. Um, so we're, thank you very much for answering those questions. We're just going to kind of try and uh, finish off with before I think Guy's going to chat as well um, on if you could kind of summarise or give just a few real key pointers um, in, in terms of one or two really solid pieces of advice 
England cricket are growing up as kind of a reflection on this, what would it be? Uh, Kieran, can you go first for us, please? Um, I think Max has been hitting the nail on the head in terms of opportunities. You know, um, just don't, don't worry about getting opportunities, but be fearful of not taking opportunities. You know, look, treat every opportunity as though it's, it's the last game of cricket you're ever going to play. You know, just really enjoy it, really maximize it. You know, make sure that when you've left the field that you can say that you've left 100% on the field. You know, you haven't left anything at home. You didn't give your best today at any point in time. And that's all anyone could ever really ask of you is to make sure that you give your absolute best. And, and once you do that, and I think also a big part in terms of being a professional and an international cricketer is to make sure that you always stay in love with the game. You know, don't ever let the game sort of become a job. Obviously, even though it's, it's a profession, just make sure that you love the game and that you're treating the game with that sort of childhood, boyhood or young girl type of love for the game so that you always have that passion to go out and play and enjoy the game. You're on mute, darling. Yeah. You're on mute, Joe. I was just saying, Pat, are you there now? Yeah, I'm back in. Sorry about right, that. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, same for you as well then, please, yeah, Max. Definitely second that, being in love with the game all the way through. Is, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. Um, and yeah, if you don't like cricket, you shouldn't be doing it really because it's, it causes a lot of heartache um, when you don't perform um, a lot more than it's worth. So yeah, definitely second what Kieran's saying there with, um, with enjoying the game. Um, another thing I think is important is to play all sports as well. Play other sports. Try... Um, well, if you're not playing sport, other sports already, don't try and focus on cricket. Make sure you've got something else there too. Because um, all sports generally will help cricket. I think you see the, all, the, all the top players, the um, ABWs, the Josh Butlers, those guys, they play all sports growing up. They weren't just focusing on one sport until they got 16, 17, 18. So if you're, if you're younger than that, you should be playing all sports. It's also, also good for, for team stuff. Um, yeah, that's one um, last thing I'm, I'm glad I did when I was growing up was playing other sports. Just before I hand over to you guys, I'd just like to say a massive thank you again to, to both Max and Kieran. Really appreciate your, the time that you've given up. Sorry about that, that, that minor blip. Um, but we do, we are very grateful for the, uh, the words of advice that you've given. Um, I think Guy would like to say a little bit just to end. Yeah, a little bit. You, you're hopeful. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was just to say uh, thank you to, to you both. And I was going to ask Joe, did you ever play against Max? I don't. How old are you, Max? Uh, Thirty-two now. No, I, 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 I was younger. Oh, you just. I know, I, I, know I look good for my age. Thanks. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, I want that filter, whatever it is. That works. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I was just gonna ask because I was hoping Joe would make sure and lead Lancashire to victory. I've got the Red Rose Cup links on um, today, <laughs> so uh, that's really important for some of these guys there. I, I was just gonna say that one of the things that was so um, key to me when I watched Max and Kieran at your age was they trained hard, they played hard. I mean, Max was a, was a great fielder. Believe it or not, Kieran could actually bowl quite quickly in those days as well. Um, and the, the teachers that you've got around here who've all played second 11 county cricket know what they've had to go through to even get to that level. But it's been great fun along the way. I mean, right now, the things I'm missing is sharing a dressing room with guys as well. And um, someone just said before about playing your last game of cricket. I think um, in the next game we play will almost feel that way. And I can't wait to, to play at North Marine Road. They thought Lancashire should be playing Yorkshire today. Notice that order. Um, and instead, we're here. And actually, you could have learned so much from today. I, I, I wanted to say... I wish Kieran all the best. The West Indies need you. They need you opening the batting. Um, and I'm sure you'll be back there. And Max, um, don't get out Lancashire or Yorkshire, but do well in the 2020 and all the county championship as well. I just wanted to ask you both, who's the best player you, you, you know, you've played with um, as well? Just picking out one. Sorry if you've answered that, but who is the best? Because I'm looking at Somerset. That must be so hard with the overseas stars you have. Yeah. Uh, give me a second, Karen. Karen, mate. Oh, well, um, well, mine's mine's quite easy. I've played with Shivner and Chandapal, and you don't get better than eleven thousand test runs. So, 
That was an easy one. Over to you, Max. No yeah, pressure. My, my, most, most people would say Triscothic at Somerset. Um, but I'm going to just because I've just because I've played mainly 2020 cricket. So I'm going to go with Kyron Pollard um, just because, uh, yeah, how, how, how much of an impact he had at, at Somerset. Um, Chris Gale played at Somerset. Yeah, Chris Gale did, but he's only a handful of games. And I, I didn't like what the way he carried on. He scored 150 in a T20 match. We lost though, mate. We lost. We lost. That's not his fault. Yeah, he is. He's hogging the strike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not even the best Kyron from the West Indies. Um, <laughs> Just say thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. When I asked you last week, I thought, oh, we'll, we'll try and, we'll, fingers crossed it can happen. And you look around the room, we've got um, Romario, who's Corey Collymore's cousin, who you may know, Kyron, has joined us all the way from Barbados, where the weather's similar to Scarbados. Um, and we've even got people like Keen and myself from Lancashire as well. Um, so it's much appreciated, and we won't mention South Africa. Um, so thank you once again to all the uh, boys and girls who, who are here go and get some nets go outside um, and I look forward to netting with one or two of you soon as well take care thank you guys thanks very much thank you thanks, thanks, Kieran. thanks guys uh, thanks for having me thanks Kieran. Thanks, thanks Max take care you and Max if you stay on for a little bit um, as well and if Keen can stay on and Romario because I've not seen them recently <laughs>